and welcome to Bullseye. This is episode seven. Lucky seven, hopefully, for the Bulls as they're going up to East Hartford, Connecticut this weekend. I say that because on the radio side, Sam Barrington last time actually went to Stores, Connecticut, mm. which is not where the football games are being played. If you are, if you <laughs> are going to the game, <laughs> everybody else at UConn plays in stores. Have you actually ever been to stores, BJ Daniels? I've never been, okay. never. Because yeah. the games are not in stores. Now you know the geography part. Kaylee Cottrell is with us as always, and BJ Daniels finally returns to the show after missing oh, last yeah. week. What was your excuse? We you missed you. Uh, just under the weather, you know, feeling pretty sick. I was in the bed, uh, you know, pretty much drained from 7 a.m. to like 7 p.m. So, mm. uh, long, long day of sleeping and resting. One day is. It well, got no, it happened yet? Friday, but it, it, it kind of had a little residue of it Monday, Tuesday. So yep. just trying to make sure mm. I'm, you know, keeping everybody else safe and healthy. You didn't want to throw it on us, is what you're no, saying. No, no, I care about you guys too much. Oh, appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, so Happy for a back. So exactly, a person that's used to being active. Yeah, what that is, was hard. What is, yeah. what is being inactive? <laughs> uh, I did some push-ups on the balcony just to try to, <laughs> you know, try to be active a little bit. But I, I definitely, uh, you know, just stayed in the house and pretty much, you know, try to make sure I was back, back where I needed to be. Well, the Bulls, we hope, are back in the win column, which is where they need to be. And uh, I know you've played up there, uh, and maybe we'll talk to Coach Gullish about this a little bit. Yeah. But in general, playing in cold weather, I guess you're used to it. Do you have any tips? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're watching. Yeah, it's, it's definitely hard to deal with. Uh, the ball, the air in the ball expands, so the ball's a little bit harder, uh, really? a little harder to grip um, as well. So you just got to be uh, very conscious of how you're gripping the football. Um, you know, and even up there with the wind, um, people kind of forget yeah. about that. So. Um, definitely got to be able to spin it, you know, so it can pierce through the, through the wind. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a factor. Wow, I would not have thought about that. You actually have to, to release it a little bit different. You got to throw it a little bit harder. You got to put some umph behind it because the wind will, will take it a little bit, especially the higher you throw it. Uh, throwing deep balls will be a little more uh, testy. Um, the wind can definitely carry the ball and take it, just like with field goals. The wind, the wind can affect that as well. Did you ever have a receiver, pro level, college level, that you know you just? said in the huddle or wherever, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna use the wind to our advantage. Yeah, uh, I mean, it actually affects play calling as well. If the wind's in your face, you know, you don't want to really want to throw deep balls because the ball will die because the right. wind's going against you. Uh, and then if you're going with the wind, you just gotta be, you know, very careful in your touch. Uh, there's been plenty of times where even in Seattle or even in the UConn when I played in college, if you throw that football and you think it's a good ball, you know, that thing will sail out of bounds on you, so. They don't put an asterisk in the in the box score for that. It goes against your record. If it's it a, does. It's, it's a still an play. incomplete pass. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> hey, uh, you were able to enjoy a lot of the build-up last week. We talked about you're yeah. going to be doing some features, and people are going to see with Homecoming. So just sort of give them an idea of what we can look forward to on the show. Yeah, I'll start it on Monday. There was a big kickoff, and a couple of our guys were there with Michael Kelly and, and spoke quickly. And they did a, a lip-sync battle for some students. So they were having a oh, ball wow. with that. Nice. On Tuesday, they, they hosted a step show in the student center it was packed the, the turnout was was awesome a lot of energy in there so students were having fun all week on Thursday was the concert I think so they packed out the Yingling Center and wow. and had a night with that and then Friday I went to the uh, parade and the carna carnival that was that was on campus here mm -hmm. and, and that was a really fun cool environment too and, and leading up to Saturday the Alumni Association tent had a big spirit tent out the the front of the stadium and which was packed and they were loud and they were rowdy and it was it was a good environment out there it so was, you're going to see some video evidence of all that she was just talking about yeah. in just a little bit here on the program if we can prime away from Jose Fernandez, we will. He's actually Alex Gullish and Jose Fernandez are speaking to each other. Jose was part of a press conference. There's a lot going on around campus. You're also going to hear from Manny Hickman of the defensive line and Sam Barrington catching up to Billy Atterbury. Uh, we always talk to a member of the former teams, and he's actually a, a member of a recent former team, the one that went to UConn and won last time these teams played. So a lot coming up in this hour on Bullseye. Back here on Bullseye, Derek Sharp. Great to have BJ Daniels back, and as always, we appreciate the time of head coach Alex Gullish. You know, similar to last week, didn't go the way you planned, thought it was at the end of the first half, and then things didn't click the rest of the way. Looking back at it, the second half particularly, what kind of was the main issue from your standpoint? Yeah, I think uh, really a lot of main issues, <laughs> um, and so you're you're going through a lot of a lot of growing pains, and you know, start offensively. We, we weren't able to put drives together. And a lot of that goes on what first and 10 looks like and us being able to get going and get in a rhythm. The, the drives where we were, we, we were driving. And the drives where we weren't, which in the second half felt like everyone, um, 
we, we weren't able to get it going. And so putting our defense in really, really tough spots, and especially really quickly, uh, you know, three and outs are, are just as bad as turnovers in a lot of ways. And so mm. weren't able to set our defense up for success. And then defensively, you, you go into the game with a level of, all right, coming off of a bad performance, you're, you feel like, man, like these guys are ready to roll. And I thought at times in the first half we were, and then in the second half, really, really flat. So same thing I told the guys, comes down to coaching, comes down to us demanding what it looks like during the week. And, and you can use a bunch of different excuses, but at the end of the day, we've got to continue to teach what habits look like. And elite habits will create an elite culture, and we're still growing. And again, I, I take full ownership in that, that we've got to continue to teach what it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, we had some success through five weeks and, and put some really, really good things on film. And then you go in the last two weeks, you certainly don't feel like you did. So as coaches, we, we've got to reset, reboot, and say, what got us to that point? Yeah. What has gotten us to this point? And be able to not only point out why, but actually show the young guys in the program why and then reset, reboot, and go, and, and demand that it looks like what you need it to look like. And, and we certainly have through the last two days, and we've got the, the rest of the week to, to be able to actually build up real confidence. And special teams in the same breath, hmm. you know, first time really all year where we weren't more physical than the opponent, first time all year where we didn't win the field position battle, and then you give up a long, a long touchdown on a punt, and it really kind of is a dagger. And so really disappointed in every imaginable way. Um, and, and again, comes back on me and, and us having the ability as coaches to, to one, reboot, two, continue to find ways that we end up on Saturday playing harder than our opponent, putting them in position to go make plays, and then allowing them to have the actual confidence to go make them, all three sides of the ball. And that's a good segue to the word confidence because a couple weeks ago after you had won the two games, confidence was high. And I remember you saying, I think in a press conference, don't read your press clippings. You're probably not as good as you think you are. Let's keep it going. Now it's a little bit flipped. Do you have to do a little bit more of the mental side of things as opposed to just obviously game planning and X's and O's? I mean, I know you're learning all this stuff as you go too. Yeah, I, I think in every imaginable way. That's why through through the the three wins, you never you never get up or get down. You literally evaluate every single play individually. You evaluate every single player individually, and then you go back and and continue to be really hard on yourself and continue to be really hard on the guys. You the wins are a result of what the week looked like. And the losses are a result of what the week looked like. And so the deeper you go into the season and the more ups and downs you have, the more consistent you can maintain your process and how you prepare and the habits that you prepare with, the easier it is to then go back and say, man, like we were, we're not quite right where, how we did that. Um, that's part of learning what winning football looks like. That's part of learning what winning habits look like. That's part of culture. Right. And I know a really overused word, but that's what it is. And, and so there's so much learning and growth going on that, that you need the success and the failures to, to go build an actual foundation for sustainable football. And that, we're in the middle of it, and it's a crappy middle of it, mm. and it's a miserable middle of it. And, um, and we went back Sunday, evaluated every single thing we've done the last two weeks, and have said, man, like, that's been really good and that's been really bad. And in every imaginable way went right back to what got us to this point, which was fundamentals, technique, running to the football, ball security, <laughs> like the, the day one of football. And I think, I, you know, you can point to a lot of different things, but us going back to fundamentals for me is where it all goes got to start or we're going to just continue in a spiral. Coach, I know going back watching film um, the day after the game, um, you, you have a multiple two to the, of emotions. Uh, one bright spot I thought was uh, Naquan Wright, uh, second game rushing for 100 yards. I thought he ran very physical. I thought he was a bright spot offensively. Um, you know, can you talk about how he's come along and what he means to that offense when 
maybe the pass game is not going the way you, you dial it up or playing, whether it's a drop here or, you know, overthrow here or there. Yeah, Naquan is, um, it has been really fascinating to watch grow. You know, he's a young man that, that was highly recruited and has played football for the last three years on and off, at times a bunch, at times not, and came in here and I think was, was looking for where does he fit. He's got a really infectious personality. He's got really, really cool leadership traits, but it's really hard to lead when you, when you haven't done a whole lot. Mm. And so through the first couple of weeks, he did some really good things and I think was kind of still searching for, man, like, like I want to do more, I want to lead more, I want, I feel like I can help more right. and, you know, had several conversations about your practice habits need to continue to improve how you show up and what you, what you look like and what you present yourself like has to resemble that of a leader. And so he went back and really, I give Naquan a lot of credit because he self-evaluates himself very critically and also can take criticism at a high rate. And that's hard to do as a young guy, it's hard to do, <laughs> yeah. especially when, when you feel like, man, I'm underachieving in some ways. And by, between myself, Coach Merritt, Coach Gordon, like your practice habits need to become elite. Mm -hmm. Then you will play better. Then you will be able to lead better. Yeah. And you've seen the last three weeks, you know, this is a guy that, that runs down on kickoff for us, mm -hmm. that self-appointed himself to run down on kickoff. Really? And actually got furious with me because the third kickoff of the game, I, I said, Naquan, you're going to go on offense. You're off and like livid <laughs> wow. in, a, in a very positive, like, way as a coach like this guy just literally just scored the touchdown mm -hmm. and now wants to run down a kickoff because he feels like he can help us more there right. and so I, i'm really proud of where he has gotten over the last really month and where he's trending because he's been really positive for our offense he's starting to lead more he's starting to lead by example more mm -hmm. he's speaking up more and again i think the more productive you are the easier it is to do that, and, and he's starting to find himself as a leader in the program. Absolutely. Well, we talked about, obviously, he's well-established as one of the tough-ass dudes, Byron Brown, but I think, and leader, uh, this would have been a game where maybe, especially considering the nature of when he got hurt and how he got hurt, that that could have been it for him. But I'm up there in the press box. I'm watching. He did not want to be looked at. He wanted to go back out on the field. Did that even surprise you just a little bit? Because I was very impressed. Um, I think Byram is, has earned uh, this reputation for, for he's just going to keep playing. And whatever happens, he's going to keep playing. And I think what's been lost in the last couple of weeks is that he's continuously gotten better and better and better. Um, you know, he and every week you see a little bit more of his footwork's getting better. You see a little bit more of him hanging in the pocket. You see a little bit more of what he's seeing is getting better. Um, and he's he's the same guy every day. He was the same guy when we got off the field. He's like, I'm good. I think I'm good. I'm like, <laughs> kind of bloody, but I'm good. Oh wow. I'm like, hey, Doc, go go see Doc. Like, I ain't making this call. And, uh, and then literally two minutes later, like, Byron's good. Like, no, not shocked um, at all. Uh, he he's tough, gritty, smart. Like, he's gonna continue to grow. I'm so excited to see him week by week what it looks like like mm -hmm. and every every monday he walks in with the same smile yeah. and he's like man where we got where are we going what are we doing i'm like mm -hmm. man like you talk about resiliency for a young guy like i i had haven't seen it in a long long time because his emotions whatever emotions they are he keeps he just keeps plugging forward and doesn't express them in terms of anything negative everything's positive he's that way with his teammates he's earned the respect of everybody um Man, like, talk about building a, a foundation for a program, that's who you build it around. Uh, where we're going next is UConn, and surprise, a team that's had a bye week and more time. I can't believe we actually have a bye coming up. Uh, but as far as one thing we talked about after the first game, it was your first as a head coach, preparing for all the different things you had to for a road trip. Have you learned the word delegate? And uh, are there certain things on a, a road trip that now you don't have to worry about so much? Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like after the first one, um, we we worked through a lot of kinks, and even after the second one, uh, worked through a lot of kinks. Um, and I feel like we've we've got our process down mm -hmm. uh, as, as good as I think it'll it'll get. Um, I think it's giving our players the opportunity to just get on a plane, relax, get off the plane, and then get right back into a process that they're used to. 
Um, but absolutely excited to, to go get back on the field. I think you have two weeks like we've had, the easy thing would be, man, we need a bye week. To me, the best thing for us right now is to reboot, go play, and go put something different on film than, than what we just showed. And so I'm excited for the opportunity. I think another team, I feel like we, we keep keep coming on in, in a similar situation, another team that's record doesn't really tell you the full story because they've, they've fought and clawed in every game. They've actually gotten healthier as the year's gone on and really well coached, tough, gritty football team, which I wouldn't expect anything different, but but man, like they're inches away in every right. single game. They finally broke through against Rice, but they have played everybody extremely tough. And, um, and I think it'll be a really, really good challenge for us. We're gonna have to play harder for longer than those guys to win the football game, which I think is, has been the key the last two weeks is that hasn't happened. And so now, again, when you get backed into a corner, like how do you respond? And, and I hope our guys continue to understand that the only way out is to work. And, um, and we as coaches got to demand it. The players got to demand it. And I, I truly think that until the players demand it of each other, we're going to be this roller coaster ride, which we have been. And um, we got to continue to empower them and give them the tools they need. And, um, and I'm excited to see what it looks like. AJ, yeah. any <clears throat> advice on playing in cold, wet weather? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, one of my first passes at UConn, I threw the ball and the ball went that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> Man, we don't, we don't need that karma. Don't, don't need it. Tank, yeah, don't coach. need that oh, karma. Yeah. But, uh, you know, UConn's coming off a of bye week. So, you know, obviously Jim Moore has coached the NFL, UCLA, and so he's kind of used to bye weeks and coming off of that. I'm sure the first couple minutes of the game will dictate, you know, kind of how they've prepared throughout their bye week, throughout their week getting ready for another game. Um, you know, how do you get our guys prepared after last week's game? Um, you know, paying attention to the details, turnovers, first down, third down conversions, but not to be uptight um, as well, to just go in and just, just swing. Yeah, we, we have focused so much on, on the other way of it. Like, how do we play as fast as imaginably possible? Mm -hmm. how, do we, how do we pull the pin and just go get it? And so we've, today was a really, really good day to go back and literally fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Like here is foundationally who we are. We play harder for longer, we run and hit, mm -hmm. and we make plays when the ball's in the air. Like that's it. Mm -hmm. So let's go back and let's keep it really, really simple. Not so simple that we don't give us, ourselves a chance to win, but keep it simple on all three sides of the ball where the guys can just go play fast and the demand that they do. Right. And um, so, no, they're gonna, be, they're gonna be ready. They're gonna be well coached, just like they have been all year. They're hungry as heck to, to go get it too. They're at home. And uh, we're gonna have to play elite level football to go get the result we want. And uh, I can't wait to see what it looks like. Right. Same here, best of luck in those endeavors, coach. Thank you. Alex Gullish. Bullseye continues with Manny Hickman shortly. Hey Bulls Nation, come with me as I take you along through all of our Homecoming Week events leading up to last Saturday's football game. Homecoming is one of USF's oldest traditions dating back to 1964, just one year after the very first graduating class. It's a time for both students and the community to celebrate the impact USF alumni make on the Tampa Bay area and beyond. It all started on Monday with a homecoming kickoff and lip sync battle. Students got to hang with Rocky and the Herd of Thunder Band while enjoying food and picking up some promotional items. A few of our football players joined Michael Kelly in kicking off the event, and the homecoming Royal Court continued the night by helping judge some entertaining student performances. Students were definitely putting on a show and giving it their all. On Tuesday, the National Panhellenic Council held the Extravaganza Step Show. The show returned for the first time since 2015 and offered a chance to learn about the history and creativity of stepping. A packed crowd enjoyed performances throughout the night. Students displayed so much passion and love for the art of stepping and the crowd was getting into it. On a beautiful Thursday night, the Yingling Center turned into a concert venue for our homecoming concert, which featured Lanai and Baby Tate. Fans enjoyed the night and had the Yingling Center rockin'. On Friday, the homecoming Running of the Bulls Parade showcased student organizations, local businesses, and USF departments. This USF tradition is the perfect environment for families and students to show support and have some fun. There were so many creative floats that displayed incredible USF spirit and pride. 
After the parade, I headed over to the homecoming carnival, where so much fun was being had. Students and the community were lined up for the many rides and games. This was such a great atmosphere as students also enjoyed food trucks, music, and entertainment. Everything led up to Saturday when the Bulls took on FAU. Tailgaters were out in full force and the Alumni Association had an awesome homecoming spirit tent set up with spirit supplies and photo opportunities. Bulls Bay was packed as fans awaited the team's arrival. Rocky was pumped up, as always. Bulls Nation showed up and was loud. The team showcased these awesome retro Robo Bowl helmets, and it was so great to see alumni return. Music alumni returned to join the band in their halftime performance, and also during halftime, we recognized our homecoming court on the field. I'm so glad I could take you along through a week filled with USF spirit. Thanks for joining me. Back here on Bullseye, Derek Sharp alongside of Bailey Cacho and Manny Hickman, Emmanuel, member of the defensive line for the Bulls and a favorite of mine. Uh, had a chance to talk to you on the radio Good side, so don't worry <laughs> if we repeat some of the same things because I want you to, especially sure. on a couple of certain topics. Yeah. But uh, for people that don't know, you came here directly from East Carolina, and it, always when you come to a new place, you got to learn about the new place, and in your case, a new team. Mm -hmm. It seems like you settled in. What would you say? I have done more than settle in. <laughs> <laughs> I told the guys I feel like I've known everybody, especially the coaching staff, for all my life. Uh, where you just, like, you, you saw me and Coach AG kind of messing around yeah. like a couple seconds ago. And Michael Kelly, too. Exactly. So, like, mm. man, listen, I didn't know that big man, I call him big man, <laughs> Mike Kelly, I didn't know that he was as down to earth like as he was. Yes. Like, you know how many Aww. conversations yeah. we done had? Like, we just sit there and just talk, shoot the breeze. And that's yeah. when we had an event last week, and he just, he's just very cool. So, I mean, that's just a compliment to even the, all the programs. Like, everybody's close-knit, everybody's fun. And um, really just learning my way around here was, was very easy because you had enough people to assist you. Nice. Did you and the guys gel kind of right away? Yes. When I came mm. on my visit, I knew for sure this was home. Mm. Uh, Tramiel Logan um, and, and Duan Cease, they were my host. So, I had mm. both of them, and it was actually funny. The following night that I had came in town, I had met GB, okay. and so after we had we had dinner, I had told the guys I was like, "Hey man, like I just committed." We sat out in the parking lot. We didn't go anywhere outside of the parking lot of Flemings, I think it was, or Firebirds, um, one or two. So yeah. we just sitting out, like we talking in the parking lot for like an hour, Aww. like just getting to know each other and stuff like that. And like to me, I'm big about that. Like if I can sit down and just vibe and just talk, so. It was, uh, I knew it was home, especially with the guys. You know, it's cool to hear you say that, and we'll talk about where you came from, but mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew Big Man. You know, he used to work for the Super Bowl committees and college football playoff committee. Man, I'm a good big man. He ain't tell me none of this. That's why I'm telling you. <laughs> he doesn't, he, but my point is, he doesn't give off yeah. that vibe, right? Like, yeah, I'm this yeah. important. Humble, man. Yeah, and, I, and it's no, it's, it's not even like a level to the things that we have seen him do. Like, I know that there's so much that he does. Like, coming from a school where we had success and we had to bring the program up from the very bottom through God's grace. He used us all to be able to go out and do what we did. But just to see the difference in resources once I got here, mm. like I, I caught myself talking to some of the younger, younger guys and some of the guys who returned and say like, y'all really don't know how good y'all have it here. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was a promotion as far as like from where I had came from, mm. but the work intensed, intensified. Sure. So. Um, it's just like, you know, just coming here, just seeing like the indoor practice facility, yeah. like, <laughs> dude, what? <laughs> well, we haven't had this. This is the first time we've done a TV show yeah. like this. Yeah. Uh, we haven't had this as a studio, but you almost take it for granted. I'm guessing you don't yeah. take all of this for granted mm. just yet. Listen, <laughs> taking it for granted, no. Sometimes you get tired of it. You're like, you know what? I'm tired of coming here. So like even down to how they improve the weight room, mm. like the state of the art. You got Bulls logos on everything, you mm. know what I'm saying? The colors, the vibes, the nutrition places in the training room, like wow. a lot of things that you, that I'm being exposed to at this level, I can't say that I have been able to experience at other places. So. You were talking before we came on the air, you're from Virginia. Yeah. Now to me, 804, baby. I've only <laughs> sunk, <laughs> I've only gone through there. So Same. is it is it south? Is it north? Is it right in the middle? What do you consider yourself? All right, let me, let me take one second. Mm -hmm. This the camera right here? That's that one? Mm -hmm. This one? Mm -hmm. Virginia is the South. <laughs> I don't care what nobody say. If you are listening to this right now, You're Virginia right is the South. If you can go, you want to know how you know if it's the South? If you go to a restaurant and you ask them for sweet tea, 
If they come out with sweet tea, sweet tea it's the sour. If they give you if sugar, they, no, say, no, no sugar. What I'm saying, if they don't, if they give you sugar and yeah, just a glass they of give tea, you, they say, that, um, uh -huh. I can make you simple syrup with like tea and mix it up, and no. I can bring you out. No, that's not no. the sour. You well, go south, uh, you got some sweet tea. That's what it is. Can we get into some other? Because I'm a big southern cooking guy. I'm from Plant <laughs> oh, City, right? Come so on, man. I'm a, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the shrimp and grits, and yeah. collard greens. Yeah. I can't pass up on those. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to get into that part of things right now. Up. See, come on, I ain't gained this weight alone. Come That's on, the, was the, say. the weight gain. <laughs> but uh, what, what's your ultimate dish before we get into the whole weight gain situation? Ooh. I mean, you can, you can go with like four or five sides. We're not limiting you in any capacity here. Listen, Doc, there's only one woman in this world. It's a close, it's, 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 a, it's a couple of you that know how to cook, so no disrespect, but Francois Hickman's kitchen. You understand? Francois Hickman's kitchen, my mama, she can cook anything that you ask, but I think the best dish, and I still eat it traditionally, like no matter how old I get, the birthday, she knows mm. I love steak. So oh, my mm. mom, and when she comes in town, it's very funny, I'm about to give you all a secret about our household. So ever since I, I left home four to five years ago, it's been a little minute, my mom, she kind of stopped cooking. But every time I come home, she cooks. She kind of stopped know what I'm saying? So my favorite dish would have to be her homemade mac and cheese, her yams, Ooh, yum. and steak. Well, I mean, steak can be just really plain, or she could put something extra into it, Listen, like a sauce, dog, or just? My mom, she throw down. She pan, she pan sears it. There you go. She puts it in the oven, <laughs> takes it, it back out the oven, Ooh. puts it back in the pan. She can make anything. And you said shrimp and grits. She make homemade shrimp and grits. Oh, mm. yum. Homemade. We're gonna have oh to stop gosh. this interview and go. Oh, she's she right. coming. She's coming for Thanksgiving this year, so I, I can oh, save you a plate. Nice. What? I can save you a plate. Really? Give <laughs> me the mac and cheese. You don't have to see the whole thing. I got you. That's great. Mac so. and cheese is a weakness of mine. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> this I can't imagine. You, Do you, you don't. You don't have any weaknesses. Look at you. I mean, you, you, when do you actually put on? Yeah, you know, put down some food. I mean, talking about putting on, putting down some food and putting on some weight though, yeah. right? Okay, we know you gained. <laughs> it wasn't over, just mom's steak. Wasn't just mom's steak, over 50 pounds? Yes. I think. Mm -hmm. So what was that process like? Transferring, you know, moving positions and that weight gain process. I always heard that I was gonna be, my frame could hold a lot of weight. But me, I was too stuck in that pretty boy stage where I wanted the abs, I wanted to be small, I wanted just to look small. But I didn't realize that like, it was cool to be smaller, but it's amazing to be big. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to be big though. Like it's, it's certain things, like yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna pass up certain things because you're not small anymore, but like being big, I love this side of life. You can lift up anything, do anything. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing on this side. And you got permission to do it. It's yeah, and I'm, right, and I'm right. naturally intimidating. <laughs> now, I understand, like, I mean, we just, like, we laughing and smiling, but, like, in, out in public, it's not many people that's going to size you up a couple times. So it's, yeah. it's fun. Was, was AG the one that told you about this necessary, necessary weight gain? Now, I know we had, we had a lot of personal conversation, but I have to give all praise and glory to God, just because it worked out perfectly. Mm -hmm. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed for opportunity, whether my specific prayer was, was that God, I just pray that you bless me to play at a school that's higher of a level at where I'm at or in the same conference. That was my consistent prayer. Mm -hmm. And when this opportunity opened up, I hadn't gotten on a scale for maybe two and a half months. And I just was working out I was doing protein shakes, I was working out heavy, all I was doing was just lifting. I wasn't doing much running, I was playing basketball here and there, but I was lifting a lot. So when I came in town and I went on a visit, I never knew that Coach KP, the only thing that he wanted to see was how big I was. <laughs> so when I got on the scale, my dad was standing next to me. I got on the scale, it said 296. Wow. My dad was like, <laughs> What had been the previous weight, last time you remembered? Last time months? I had, I had remembered weighing myself, I think it was around maybe 250, what the something wow. like that. So like transitioning from my junior, my junior to this uh, was like late season, senior season to now, yeah, I put on close to, to 50 pounds. Wow. How'd you do it? How many calories do you think you were taking in a day? Listen, that's a, that's that's a cute word to use calories intake and all that. No, I just I just punch I, I just, just punch protein. Put it down. Listen, I just punch protein down. Oh <laughs> the secret, goodness. the real secret uh, weight gainer is five guys. Yeah. Oh. Huh? Yeah. yeah huh? 
because you know just their fries alone it's probably about 3,000 <laughs> intake calories. And I'm trying to tell you and I got I know my regiment so like when I feel and my mom she's always on me too like so my mom she's one of the type of people like if she knows that you have something that you want to obtain she's gonna stay on you to make sure that you get it so last night I was on the phone with her she was like well, you know, Manny, I just think that you just need to eat more so your body feels better. Just get more nutrients. So like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so she's somebody who always on it. And my dad, he he's real cool. So he kind of like, listen, man, like, either you're going to stay big and play big or you're going to get little and get treated like you're little. So it's uh, up to you. So my dad, dad. He, my dad, he one of them type of people. He's like, listen, you do what you want to do. But I'm just telling you, you better keep your weight up. So. All right, so that does not sound, what he said, does not sound preachy, but we could use that word to describe your father and your mother. So tell people. You oh, know. well, that, that's, a, that's a wonderful transition because my dad, <laughs> my, my dad, my dad he, he tells you to make the choice, and that's exactly what my parents allowed me to do in ministry and following mm -hmm. and pursuing God. They never forced it upon me. My relationship with God, it came to a point where they allowed me to learn the foundation of it, but everybody has to make the decision. Everybody has to make the decision that you either believe or you don't. And I believe that my life is a testament to many people just because I come from a school, a high school where nobody went Division One in 18 years. Wow. I've, um, I bounced back from uh, many injuries. This year I actually had my first um, surgery needing injury. A lot of people don't know. Um, so. God has been really, 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 really real to me. And uh, that's one thing that my, my parents have been able to do. They allowed me to make the choice. And my mom, she's somebody who stays hard on me, exactly like I said, desiring to go. So if she knows that I want to grow, she's gonna stay on me. So she called me last night and she told me to get back in the Bible and to start learning different things about different prophets and things. So just like my work, she does the same thing. She does the same thing in ministry and the same thing with my dad. How do you think your faith influences and affects your play? It does, it does uh, more than I can explain, just mm -hmm. because I'm able to outwardly express who God is to me, to the guys around me. Like when you hear, when you come here, and of course, like I said, I didn't know everybody, but I knew everybody just because it felt like I was home. Mm -hmm. And to hear people say like, man, God, God, he so do love you, because I had bounced back from my surgery mm -hmm. so fast. It was wow. literally a miracle. And just to allow people to see that and have conversation with guys about God and just how do you how do you believe this way and it just shows you that God he can he can use your life for anything as long as you allow him to like as long as you say yes and you you yield it over to him like he he does it. One last thing uh, talking about people uh, something that might not everybody knows mm -hmm. and relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. R.J. Perry. R.J. Perry is my cousin. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? So it's just another another blessing on top. Like mm -hmm. coming here, Coach Frankie, he came from ECU. Uh, Coach Kyrie Hawkins was my first GA in college at ECU. Oh my goodness! And then a cherry on top was was hearing that uh, R.J. was here, and I was like, somebody was like, hey, your cousin out there? I was like, for real? We got here. And he was like, cuz. I was like, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's my it. that's my dude right there. So. Aww. Well, thanks for, all, thanks for all the insight, mm -hmm. Emmanuel, Manny, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not going to hold you to it on Thanksgiving, but if you see me, you know what's coming. Hey, man, listen, I got you. <laughs> okay. And I want to make sure, like I say, of course, like I said before, I really do appreciate the both of you all for mm -hmm. all of the work that you all do for us and how you all build our brands mm -hmm. and you help us to be out in the forefront just because you all don't know that this adds on to our resumes <laughs> and also it helps the community out to be able to learn and, and experience who we are because it's not much you know everybody's out there cheering and shouting but they really don't know us personally and then the back side of it is that I do want to say I appreciate this fan base I'm somebody who I understand that people can kind of put their opinions and things on people especially their comments like oh they suck and stuff like that it just shows how true and real they are to us they support us and it's powerful to see that we can dictate right. the outcome of their next day so when we right. win they got a good day when we right. lose it's a bad day so it really shows that that they're committed to us and i really do appreciate this bulls family just because they're real well you've received some good message in your life and you just gave us a bunch of them thank you Absolutely. so much i appreciate you all god mm. bless y'all bulls i will continue next welcome back ladies and gentlemen it's your boy sam barrington we got our special guest on show with us here this week, Billy Atterbury. How you doing, my man? I'm doing good. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. Now, I'm one of those guys, like, 
geography. I love geography. So just by default, right, I get into different cultures, ethnicities. I'm thinking Atterbury is Irish. You got the you got the red hair going on there. Talk to me. Yeah. Where's your family from? What's the history behind Mr. Billy Atterbury? So I don't know a ton about my mom's side of the family, but my dad's side of the family, they actually have a book that is like family tree back to the 1400s in England. Wow. So it's there, there's probably some sort of an Irish there. That's, I figure, you know, with the red hair, you know, that's yeah. what that means. but uh, with, with the last name, we found it back to uh, England. Nice. Nice. Now, Tampa, Florida, you got to USF in the mid 2010s. Obviously you got the experience of coaching with, I mean, playing under multiple coaches. Talk to me about your experience at USF obviously blocking for the more, most iconic USF quarterback of all time in Quinn Flowers. Yeah. Um, I'll touch on the coaches first. Yeah. I had two head coaches, uh, Willie yeah. Tapp and Charlie Strong. I had four offensive line coaches, three coordinators. So uh, I got to have a lot of fun. I got to experience a lot of different offenses, a lot of different coaching styles. And uh I think that it helped make me a better player because you had to learn how to adapt and change to what the coaches demanded or what their offense needed for you, whether you need to be a fast guy, a power guy, uh, you know, what the offense they want to run, you know, to be successful, you have to be able to adapt yourself to whatever they're going to do. Um, and then touching on Q. Yeah. I mean, probably the most adaptable player you've ever seen, you know, if he needs to throw the ball 70 yards, he can, if he, needs to make something happen with his feet. If the play breaks down, you know, he's the magic man, you know, he can make something happen when there isn't an opportunity. So uh, getting to play with him and block for him was definitely a blessing. And, you know, he was a great guy on and off the field. Yeah. I think one of the special things about your career is you had the opportunity to experience some heartache and not be as so successful at one point. And then next thing you know, you know, you're arguably on, you're one of, on one of the teams that's arguably the best team in USF history. Talk about what led to the turnaround, especially with USF currently being at a pivot point in his career where they're starting to find some success. Yeah, um, I think that it has to come from both sides, the players and the coaches. Obviously, right, 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 on right. my end, it was Willie Taggart had just come in. His first two years didn't do well, two and 10, four and eight. I committed my freshman year was the first year we went eight and five, went to a bowl game. Um, I think that, you know, he had to bring some of that swagger, some of the culture and kind of change it from what had happened in the last coaching staff. I wasn't here for it, so I can't really speak to it, but I think that he had to implement a little bit of his own system. Um, but more importantly, I think it, it comes down to the leaders, the guys who have been there through the heartache that were, tired of losing they wanted to see change you know the guys who'd been there a long time played a lot of games Kofi Thor um some of the guys on the defense Augie Sanchez you know uh, there's a ton of guys who played a lot of games for us in those early days uh Jamie Bird uh some other guys, you know, I don't need to mention too many people, but I, I see think, you shouting out your guys. Yeah, I mean they came they came in and they said, you know, we with coach Taggart, this is the way we're going to run things. You know, you have to, you have to put up or shut up and, you know, they, they demanded change and that's what happened. And I think that's what has happened a lot with coach Golish is from every, you know, I'm not in the locker room, so I can't speak to that, but everything that I've heard through the media and, you know, everything that he said is very much like we're setting the tone we're changing the script now, you know, and I think that that's been a really good thing uh, for the players to see. Right. Well, you talk about UConn coming up here in just a little bit for USF. Last time USF played UConn, you were on the team. What kind of opponent is UConn usually presented as? I think historically, I think we've had pretty good success against them. Um I think that they are a team that you can sometimes think is underrated. You know, um, they, especially when I was there, they weren't, you know, the big dog of the conference with us or, you know, the team from Central Florida or, 
you know, one of the other teams that was always in the title fights like Memphis. Um, so they were one of those teams, though, that if you didn't show up, though, they were one of those, you know, trap games where, you know, you, you if you just came off a big game, you know, you, you can't just sit back and relax with them. Right, right, right. And then I guess my last question for you is, knowing all that you know and, you know, experiencing the success that you did as a player, what do you think is integral for each guy to keep in mind as they're at that midpoint here in the season for USF? Do your rehab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stay in the training room, stay in the weight room. Obviously, you know, the best ability is availability. Sure. Um, you know, I think having a positive mindset and keeping your body healthy is the best thing that you can do for your team. And I think that, you know, they have enough guys that have been there a long time. You know, I looked at the list the other day of the roster, and I think I counted seven, eight, nine guys that are there from when I played, you know. So they've got some guys who have been there more than four or five years. Um, they know what it's been like to win. They've been a part of the last couple of years. And I think that they want to be a part of that rebuild with Coach Golish to set the tone for the younger guys going forward in the future. I think that's very special that you said that because I think fans just see the sun, the Saturday product or the game day product, but not everybody knows what it takes to stay healthy at this point in the season, especially after coming out of training camp and all of that stuff. So, Billy, I appreciate your time. By the way, you look amazing. I follow you on social media. An offensive linemen tend to shrink down, but it seems like you gain more muscle than your playing days. So I also want to commend you for doing that. Well, thank you. I, uh, I'm enjoying, enjoying still getting in the weight room and still, yeah. you know, pushing my body and seeing what it can do, you know, just because the playing career is over doesn't mean you have to give up on all the fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, a guy who calls weightlifting fun, Billy Atterbury, thank you for your time today. Until next time, my friend. Yeah, thank you. I look forward to seeing you soon. So I hope you guys saw what we did putting Billy Atterbury on because he was a member of the offensive line the last time the Bulls played and beat UConn back uh, four seasons ago. It's been now. We'll get to generally what it's like to play up there in just a little bit. But one thing we haven't brought up yet is as you work closely with alumni and one of our, speaking of recent, famous alumni was at the game last weekend. Yeah, uh, Marquez Valdez Scanlon. Um, I didn't get a chance to really catch up with him. I know Kaylee did. Yeah, I mean, yeah. how was that experience? He's always so great. He has such a love for USF and I asked him, you know, how long are you here? And he said, I'm flying back after the game and getting to, back to work tomorrow. Wow. So he just came in, in town for the game and, you know, his love for USF is, is super cool to see as mm -hmm. always. Now, the good news is we checked the weather forecast for Connecticut, and it's Tampa weather. Because as we're doing it today, lows are around 50, mm. highs around mid-60s. Of course, we joke <laughs> with that, but we are going to throw in, <laughs> and this is where we get into your style choices. Yeah. Because you're going to be there. Yeah. 50% chance of rain, which makes it feel right. a lot colder. Your the thoughts? rain is going to be what kind of gets me. I don't know, I mm. don't know how I'm going to prepare for the rain. But I did, I think I might have to break out the pants for the first time Absolutely. this season. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have my jackets, People my are long not sleeve with me. <laughs> you know what's funny? Actually, the other week, someone literally stopped me in the hall and asked me if I like had to wear a skirt, like if that was like a requirement. I'm just like, no, that's just my go-to, my little <laughs> uniform. But I might break out with the pants um, and the long sleeves. I do have like a headband made of wool that I got in Ireland when I was there. Wait so a second. I I might you, have. You do to... have a little Irish connection, right? Didn't you I say do. your dog's yes, name my... is Dub? Dog's name is Dublin. Um, my granddad was from Belfast, Northern Ireland. So my whole family wow. went there this past summer because actually my granddad passed down citizenship to my mom. My mom passed it down to my brother and I. So we hold dual citizenship, but we hadn't been. My mom had, but me and my brother and, and dad hadn't. So wow. we have our Irish passports and finally got to go experience it. And it's stunning over there. We had truly the best time. Got to meet some family that I hadn't met before and see granddad's wow. old stomping grounds up there. So whatever happens, please bring that Irish wool hat, even if you don't <laughs> end up having to wear it, and, and send us some photos, would you? Will do. All right. Absolutely. When's the last time you uh, were at a sporting event or an event representing the school where you weren't wearing a suit? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's been a while. I was going to say, what was your last game? It's been a while. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> that would have been it. Yeah, I mean, I think my last, you know, game might have been in the XFL. Um, it was in Seattle, so it was cold. 
uh, and rainy as well. So a little bit of what you'll experience this weekend. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to, we're gonna have to trap BJ Daniels into just wearing shorts one day. <laughs> but not on this show. Not on this show. That's not how we roll here. We hope you enjoyed. It was great fun bringing it to you again. Uh, by the way, speaking of bye weeks, we do have a bye week next week from the program. So I know you're gonna be looking for us. Give us a week off, and we'll be back strong before the Bulls' next game. Thanks a lot for checking us out. As usual, for my partners, Kaylee and BJ, I'm Derek Sharp. Horns up. <laughs>